everybody. Welcome to a live stream barrel selection here with my two boys, Hog and Steve. How you doing, boys? How you doing, Fred? Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, you Steve. You too. So you all uh, are former double platinum of my whiskey club and uh, got to know you all a little bit in your palates and how you like the taste and everything. So we're gonna we're gonna put all that training that we had to to good use to good use. We're gonna we're gonna have all that taste camp time. We're gonna put it to use. You ready? Let's do yeah, it. I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> well, just as a, a recap, we kind of talked about this last week. Uh, how my whiskey club is gonna work from now on is basically everybody who was a part of the original whiskey club. You're kind of grandfathered in to get emails to uh, to essentially have the first crack at buying uh, the barrels from uh, Sealbox. So Sealbox is my retail partner here, and uh, they will be taking they will be taking the um, the barrels, and then I'll email them out to people, and then they will go to like my my kind of like general list, and then they will go like uh, public. But if you all are uh, are are watching this. And you would like to become a member that, you know, the best thing I can tell you is, you know, to subscribe to the channel, become a YouTube member. You know, there there you will find communication about future barrels. And today we are tasting some uh, some MGP action. We actually had someone who could not join us. So Eric uh, had to go to Phoenix and he's got the sample. So he's probably going to uh, uh, he's probably going to be like, you know liking whatever we don't like or vice versa right so that's how it goes but so let's talk a little bit about you two so hog how did you get into bourbon uh, i started drinking bourbon probably i want to say four or five years ago on a regular basis and stuff and just i uh, got into it slowly actually through manhattans more than anything and mm -hmm. um transformed into a pretty much directly neat um and it didn't take long for me to to get a hankering for it. So uh, pretty much uh, went from there and went a little crazy with it, as most people kind of do. And um, thankfully, uh, again, thanks again for Fred for uh, having me on here and got to meet some great people through the Whiskey Club so far, Steve and Eric and uh, Biff and, you know, a couple other people. And uh, it's been a been a really great time. Um, and I appreciate you having me on. Have, absolutely. And Steve, you out in St. Louis, you can see that you've built your bunker up there. No, Hog's got quite the bunker, but I'm seeing I'm I'm spying some mictors behind you, a little bit of a Black Maple Hill. You know, it looks mm -hmm. like you've been you've been adding to the collection there. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of I'm in my dining room, which really nobody needs a dining room in my house. It became a bourbon room, so uh, I'm surrounded by. A lot of good little products that you've uh, helped teach us about over the years. But uh, I got into it, I think, probably like a lot of people. College, uh, drinking Maker's Mark at that time was premium, which, you know, is, is good whiskey. But we've obviously evolved a lot and, and uh, you know, went to school with three UK grads. So they, they introduced you to whiskey at a, a college age. And since then, um, been building the building the bunker. And, you know, it's been great being uh, in the community with you, Fred, especially I go, you know, I know we went back to, I mean, it's like a year ago when all this COVID thing happened and, yeah. you know, you, you did an awesome job. I remember sitting on the porch, like probably a lot of your, your viewers sitting on the porch or sitting inside and just listening, have a great time with the community. And then since then, yeah, my buddy hog, he's that Penn state Nittany lion fan out there and uh, Biff and Eric and uh, some, some crazy stories that, uh, that we get going. And also shout out to our our denver 520 5280 society members so uh he's not on i don't maybe he's out there today but uh you know, yeah nate great. yeah yeah nate will be yeah. coming on the uh we got some jack daniels picks and nate nate will be with me on those so uh nice. def definitely a uh definitely a great community we have here of course the youtube community always talk about how important this is to me personally and like uh and so it's so exciting for me to be able to bring this uh and it, to even live stream it you know just doing a barrel pick you know barrel picks are are fun and mgp opened up their over open up their private barrels and as soon as they opened up their private barrels i was like um do you mind if i get one of those and they're like 
how about two? And I was like, wow, yes, sir. I'll take me two of those fine barrels. So that's what we're going to do today. But I want to give folks a, a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a, like history behind this distillery because, you know, the bourbon's just, it's getting, it's attracting a lot of people who are ignoring the history. And every time I do anything, a tasting, I want to try to like sneak in a little history. So maybe people get, you know, understand it a little better and they, they're still tasting the whiskey, but they're like, I, I snuck in the history. So, uh, uh, the MGP is at the Lawrenceburg, Indiana facility, formerly owned by Seagram's. The original name of it was Rossville. So it was called Rossville in the 1800s. You know, and Seagram's comes along, and there's basically two distilleries in, in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. There's the Seagram's facility, then there's the, like, old Quaker. It's basically, you had uh, Seagram's and then Shinley, the two, two of the largest, like, spirits companies. And this one was basically the Lawrenceburg, Indiana for Seagram's was basically a facility that was used for blends. And so they distilled a lot of high, high rise and bourbons that would be used in for blending purposes uh, to include, you know, Seagram's like Canadian whiskey. So Canadian whiskey allows for 9.09% of other spirits. And so this was like a kind of like a topping, a topping off kind of flavor distillery. Like it was just used in blends. One of the things is, you know, a lot of people don't know is that Seagram's also owned for roses and they, the basic V yeast that uh, Seagram's used to use is the same V yeast that Four Roses has. So MGP and Four Roses share a yeast. The V yeast is the same exact yeast. And so everything is going hunky dory for, um, for the Lawrenceburg, Indiana distillery. And then the grandson of uh of seagram's uh the brofman he wanted to basically pull out and he got in the music uh, movie business and uh founded uh what would become viacom and uh just completely hightails it and so after that the the spirits community was just kind of like circling around like vultures of all the seagram's brands and like Pernod Ricard and Diageo, basically, just um, they they basically just split they split Seagram's down the middle, and uh, Diageo and Pernod Ricard basically got uh, almost equally half and half. Now little things got trickled out here and there, and uh, people would get you know little leftovers, but Pernod Ricard ended up getting the Lawrenceburg, Indiana distillery. Diageo got Crown Royal. So those are two of the big like you know acquisitions out of it. And Pernod Ricard's looking at this facility is like, you know, uh, let's make RTDs, so ready to drink. So they started using this facility as a way to do RTDs. And they were focusing on the Australian market. The Australian market then changed their tax structure and it was not lucrative for them to pursue this venture. And so uh, Panora Card was like, all right, we're just going to get rid of this distillery. They're trying to sell it. They're trying to get someone interested in it. And they can't get anyone interested. On the like, 11th hour going into midnight when they're about to mothball the distillery, about to like just completely give up, lay everybody off, uh, the parent company of Angostura, CL Financial, came in and bought them in like 2007. And from there, CL Financial completely changed the business model and renamed the place as Lawrenceburg uh, Distillers Indiana, otherwise known as LDI. They start taking all of these stocks that were used for blends and for uh, the RTD market and basically selling them on the wholesale side. And so Templeton, Redemption, all of these brands just kind of came up out of nowhere. They start yesterday, and then they have five 10-year-old 10 10 -year rye whiskey. 
And that was kind of the the rebirth of rye whiskey is like all of this 95% rye mash bill whiskey that was out there uh, used for blending was now entering, you know, the bottle sphere and in bars and in, in, uh, retail. And then uh, CL Financial got caught up in a global economic collapse and they were left for dead financially. MGP Ingredients came in and bought them kept that business model, but added the business model of starting their own brands. And what we are tasting today, gentlemen, is basically that next wave of, um, of what they are, what they have become. So they have gone from like a contract distiller, from a source whiskey supplier, to having their own brands, to taking that next leap of doing their own barrel picks. And so here we are doing one of the first uh, barrel picks in the portfolio. Now, I'm sure they've they've probably done about 100 by now, but that's still like in the grand scheme of things, that's still one of the first. So let's, uh, do you all want to start with rye or do you want to start with uh, bourbon? I, I would prefer bourbon because I already poured the things to get ready. <laughs> so, but I, I'll do whatever. All right. All right. So let me get a, I got to find the, uh, Find all mine. Okay. So, all right. So, let's start with the bourbon. These are barrels 297, 182, 557. Shoot, I'm, I'm already out of water, hog. Well, I got a big bucket here for you, buddy. You know, send me, I mean, send me, I, I send me some of that water. <laughs> you know, I, I mentioned to you guys before we got on the air, I ate a big old, um, I ate a, uh, a big old um, cheeseburger before this, and I'm feeling, I'm feeling kind of fatty. Well, hopefully, you kept the onions off your palate there, buddy. You know, onions aren't so bad. That, you know, some people. Uh, so people do better after they taste onions. Okay. You got two seasons, not for a few months, Fred, so you're okay. What's that? You got the time to, you know, swimsuit seasons, not for several months. So you don't have to worry Oh, yeah. About I mean, you know, the question is, is it straight Speedo season this year? Never straight Speedo. <laughs> yes, please, no. <laughs> <laughs> Leave that to Borat. <laughs> yeah, he, he can pull it off, though. All right, so let's go ahead and start. Uh, for whatever reason, I'm in the order of uh, uh, 297, 182, 557. You know, I'm going to start with 297. Now we get these at cash strength. Mm. We don't have the we don't have the ages on these. Let me see if I can find the age in my email. So I'll tell you, I haven't actually had I've a lot, had a lot of bourbon and rye, but I haven't had either of these. So I've been looking forward to trying, and I didn't cheat. I didn't crack them open before. So really, oh, wasn't cheating. I'm just ready to rock, man. You, I don't, I don't blame you. You got to be ready to go. All right. So let me get. Let me see if I can pull up some details. Okay. So we are looking at. Hmm. I was hoping to have a, an age on these. Well, we won't taste based on age or anything like that. So let's. So RVA whiskey saying you should have had everybody go out and get a McRib before the tasting. 
You know, I, I don't think I could do that to you. I don't think I could do that to you. All right, 297. 297 is tasting pretty good. Mm -hmm. I, like I like the, the uh, more. I, I like the kind of like uh, viscosity to it. It's kind of like a really thick uh, kind of thickness to it. Rich. Very rich. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine what I it's a mad it's what I imagine Scrapple tasting like if it was chocolate. <laughs> well, you're welcome to put the chocolate on, I guess, if you want, but um, yeah, you know, it'll ruin it. You think Scrapple would ruin chocolate? Probably not. You could probably put anything on it for me. I'd probably eat it up. All right, well, so you may have to explain what Scrapple is to you. One eighty two. Yeah, I mean, folks may not know what Scrapple is. Well, there, there's always Google there. I mean, um, I don't want to gross anybody out going Man, through it all. But Hog, you could you could be coming the authority of uh, pig byproducts being molded together and you know cooked. I mean, and your your nickname <laughs> is Hog, so uh, that's true. Um, I, ironically, it comes from the fishing end, but you know, I, I, you know, if it comes to the pig, I guess you know, I, there's nothing wrong with that. All right. You know, Eric, there might be something for Eric to put in uh, his uh, his new place. That's right. So 182 is like, like we're coming off of this big, bold, really powerful, really kind of highly viscous, highly thick 297. And then we have like a, a kind of a delicate, like, you know, a ballerade dancer, uh, 182, a lot of flavor there, but it's a lot more delicate. You know, it, it's like, uh, it smells different. It tastes, I mean, it, it tastes less meaty. Yeah. It doesn't have like the same body and it's got more of a, I don't know if it's a higher proof or more ethanol. I get more burn on my tongue. Yeah. So I think we're in agreement there, Steve, between, between our two votes. Uh, 182 will be out. 182 does not pass. So how this works, folks, while this is my barrel pick, I put my name on it. I do this as a team. We are, you know, anybody who comes on and tastes the barrel with me, you are an equal taster, and your vote is as important as mine. So that's that's how I believe. All right, 557. Five, Hmm. Now this smelling a little bit more smell a little herbly smelling uh like it's it got some it's like a cross between some herbs and cinnamon. I like that. To me, I'm getting a lot of baking, a lot more baking spice in that one. This is a yeah. There's a lot of baking spices in here, and it's just and it's kind of like chewy. It's like baking spices in a granola bar. It's like it's, yeah. It's a uh, very very unique. I get it more like the back of the tongue and the roof of my mouth, and it mm -hmm. seems like it's got a pretty good finish. Who I find interesting is like. I'm gonna go back to 297 to see if it if it lives up to what I thought it was, but like just that basic oiliness and the viscosity of it, just kind of way it worked all around my palate. I do I I feel like um, I feel like 297 had hit more points of the palate than the than uh, 557. Yeah, I like 297. Yeah, 297 is uh, is definitely my favorite. Oh, that was easy. Hog, where well, are you at? Hog, yeah. it doesn't have to be uni unanimous. I mean, 297 is already won, but you... Um, would, would, <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just use... Uh... We we'll use five fifty seven or whatever it is for uh, the the scrapple mix, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> five fifty seven is the scrapple winner. 
But if Steve, if you're if you're with me on this, two ninety seven is your favorite. Yep, yeah, I'm aligned. Yeah, so five five seven yep. definitely was second. Uh, one eighty two probably shouldn't have been sent to us, but uh, five five seven is definitely a uh, is is tasty and will be a happy barrel for someone this year. You know, what's funny is like 182. I'm like talking about like how it's not, it's not, it doesn't do it for us. You watch, this will be like the, uh, the high value secondary barrel, like <laughs> next year or something. This, this will be one that everyone goes crazy for, but that's, that's, that's how it works. Like all, all, all barrel samples are someone else's rejects. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you that. I just tasted the 182 again. I, yeah. There's no doubt. I mean, that I definitely agree with. I still think five five seven's not bad. I think it's good. Yeah. But where do you stand I, on two ninety seven though? Or do you do you have an No, I'm with you. I'm with I'm with two ninety seven. I uh, mean I you can tell I think you can tell right away. But I like five five seven too. Not bad. All right, so we have our bourbon victor. Ladies and gentlemen, may I get a round of applause. <laughs> round of applause for two ninety seven. Woo. All right. So now we go on to the rye. Hold on, I need to write winner on that or I'll forget. I need some more Glen Cairns. It's not good. I just started smelling the Sharpie, Hog. What? You ever do that? You ever, like, use a Sharpie and then, like, oh, hey, what's that smell like? <laughs> Don't get too familiar with it. That's bad stuff after a while. Yeah, I know. It's like huffing paint. You know, that's what kids in my high school did, like, to get high. They weren't doing drugs. They were huffing paint. And I'm like, Ooh. like, what the fuck is wrong with you? At least do, a, like, a real drug, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I never understood that myself. No doubt about it. Ga gasoline and paint. They were huffing paint and gasoline. I'm like, who the fuck is going to huff gasoline? That's so stupid. <laughs> yeah, I hate to smell gasoline. It's ridiculous. All right, so we've got five, 370, 442, 387. We're moving on to the rye. So which ones are you all do you on three seventy first? Yeah, we'll do three seven, three seven zero, four four zero, and then three eighty seven. Four four two, I got. Four four two, I mean, yeah. Now, what, will they proof this down to 100, Fred, or will they keep this barrel oh, proof? Oh, no. We get this straight out of the sweet Ooh. barrel, uncut, unfiltered. It'll be just just like it was the Lord intended. All right, here we go. 370. Well, that's definitely right. Some more fruity. Reminds me of a honeysuckle. Like there's some like like a like a honeysuckle and some black licorice. Definitely black licorice. Now, do you know the the mash bills on this one, Fred? Yeah, these are all going to be 95% rye. Okay. I'll just I'll just confirm. And yeah, I'm getting it, all the normal the stuff. Too. Cardamom and clove and I'm getting like all that little bit of that stuff. Normal rye stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 95 uh 
Uh, 95 rye, and then there's a 51. I don't think we have any of the 51% ryes. These four, five, six year old, they. I mean, I literally have like no information on these. Mm. I just have the samples. And of course, I didn't follow up in my communication for emails, but. Uh, yeah. Not important. It's nice. Yeah, let's see if I have anything. Did it fall off for you guys much? I mean, I, the finish falls off for me quite a bit. Or am I wrong? Yeah, this three three seventies yeah. kind of kind of there and out. So yeah, it's got weed up front and fruity, and there's not much to it after that. He's finished. And then and then four four two. Speaking of like gasoline, this smells like petrol. You know, like a European gas station. <laughs> Sounds like you've had experience with that, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty you're big on the gas today, Fred. What's that? I said you're big on the gas today, buddy. That's right. On both ends. <laughs> you know, there's some clove here. You know, the licorice and some some like herbal candy, but I don't. I don't really care for this one either. No, well, I don't either. Nope. I'm with you. So we got two rejects and and a hopeful. Let's see if it's a contender. Let's see if 387 can pull it off. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Smells pretty sweet. It's got more body to it, too. It's good. Wow. That one lasts, a lot, I mean, a, a lot longer. Like, a lot. And I'm mm. what I'm going to say here, I don't mean this as an insult, but it it tastes like cherry cough syrup. It's got like this cherry cough syrup note. Mm. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Like some, like a, like a hair of menthol. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it like, um, not like a NyQuil, but like an herbal cough syrup. Yeah. The, the, the like a menthol kind of, uh, like a Luden's cough drop. Kind yeah, of thing. that's it. The Luden's cough drop. That's it. <laughs> Devin Patel says he knows, uh, crazy because he loves that flavor mm. well i remember eating those things i remember when you get sick as a little kid and this was back in the late 70s but good lord man my my mom would get those ludens cough drops and you started eating them <laughs> like candy sometimes because you used to think they tasted so darn good don't ask me why but i remember that for whatever reason zach pettit says next promo video who the fuck huffs gasoline the channel will explode. <laughs> Ooh, that may be true, actually. Well, you always put a still house uh, can behind you, Fred, and it would look like a bottle of uh, gasoline there. there yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I hate that brand. Um, I, I hate that brand so much. They, they reached out to me wanting to do something, and I'm like, have you all ever read anything I've written about you? And... Um, they were like, no. I was like, well, there you go. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, walked through a, I walked through a store the other day, and they had apple something, cherry something, mm -hmm. 
they had all kinds of different flavor things. You know, you always see the red and the black thing sitting there, but I never saw all the other ones. You know, they they had a lot of uh, they had a lot of money to push on the market and everything, and um, I I don't I don't I don't think it ever hit. They were kind of gimmicky. That was a bit of a trend. Those like gas cans, but. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I just put them in another category, like in ignoring. So, you know, like, listen, I have said some very stern things uh, about a lot of distilleries, but I'm rooting for them. I, I don't I don't find myself rooting for gimmicky kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. yeah oh, hey, b- by the way, everybody, breaking news, uh, a member, YouTube member, Danny Line is viewing... And there's a going joke on the on the channel here. Like anytime I mention anything in um, on the channel, Danny will chime in. I can't get it in Connecticut, and it's like so you know, like it, pretty much everything he can't get in Connecticut. And so breaking news, he can get both Remus and Rossville in Connecticut. So I'm almost a little disappointed. Awesome. Yeah, uh, congrats. But, Good uh, for him, man. I know. Yeah. Good for him. But I was also all excited to present something to him that he couldn't get in Connecticut. So that was the. Uh, so let's get back to 387 here, fellas. I'm I'm a little weirded out by this one. Um, it's not. It's like tracing down like a kind of like an aperitif or digestive, uh, uh, amaro-ish kind of mm. at best. Uh, flavor for me i'm gonna dive back in you know rinse my palate out a little bit but these rise i will just say as a whole extremely disappointing in comparison to the bourbons yeah i would agree with you i went back and nosed 442 and it just just not as good as the one we had but Four forty two is just so different. It's just very different from from both of the other ones, and it, it's a very different ride to me. Yeah, the and three seventy does a lot more. I mean, I feel it more across my palate, but I don't know if it's necessarily a, a good yeah. thing. I mean, I, I, I think I kind of lean toward 387 and just kind of more fruity and sweet, but I'm with you too. I It reminds me of this stuff, you know, like Amaro No Nino, just a little bit or something, you know? Yeah, uh, I, it, it is not. Uh, I think I'm going to, you know, I think I'm going to have to just say, uh, let, you know, let's pass on the rye. Um, you know, retasting 387. You know, it just it's just not there. Like I'm I'm one want, I'm wanting something else. They're not they're not doing it for me. Um and you know we have that liberty. We don't we don't have to pick something. You know, we, we can do what I want and and no, it's not like um it's not it's it's not like it's abnormal. But um this is a this is I, I don't feel like this is these three samples are good representations of what is arguably the best rye American rye distillery of the last 100 years. You know, if you take a look at some of the ryes that have came out of Indiana, the Lawrenceburg, Indiana distillery, um, in, in the last, like, you know, 25 years, you, you put that whiskey up against anything. You know, there's just an incredible incredible distillery and i just don't think these are good representations of that amazing facility so hog unless you object i'm going to ki- i'm going to give these the boot i'm good with that yeah. all right i think people are going to really like this remus though this 297 was really good oh that that it's oh yeah the, the, we're, we're going to go ahead and just confirm right we're going to confirm I don't mind pouring it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, but we're we're doing this for the club, for the sake of the club, you know. That's true. Sacrificing ourselves—is that what you're saying? And America, never, never forget America. Oh yeah. Thank you for your service, by the way, Fred. Oh, thanks, brother. 
Yeah, that's good. This may be a broad statement, but it kind of reminds me, maybe just recency, I had some Jack Daniels uh, barrel select yesterday, and so it just kind of has that friendliness, I guess. Yeah, you know, it, it reminds me a little bit of the um, of some bookers I've had, too. So, mm. you know, I think we have a very, you know, a, a very strong, like, you know, can move, uh, you know, back and forth. Uh, Devin uh, points out, you know, that our our uh, our honor that we bring to the table, the the camaraderie, what a sword to fall on for us to dr have another dram of what is our easily our favorite here, two ninety seven, and again, Devin and everybody watching at home, as we put this upon our lips and feel it go down our gullet. We do this for you. We do this for you. Cheers to that, my friend. Cheers indeed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm picking up a lot more. Uh, it's weird. I'm getting like more caramel and vanilla than the typical, which you wouldn't get a whole lot from a rye, I guess. But I'm, the second go around, I'm getting actually more of this, more of the like burnt brown sugar almost in a way. Not burnt, but caramelized like brown sugaries taste a little bit and from a rye that's a little weird i guess but yeah it's a um which one you went back which one did you go back to the 297 yeah so you got some more brown sugar in there i'm getting a little bit more of that like uh caramelized uh mm -hmm. you know like it's almost becoming a caramel to me a little bit mm -hmm. on the uh as it transitions from the palate to the finish a little bit. It really is. It, it really has changed too, you know? And I think too, when you come back to these other, you come back to it after tasting all these other whiskeys, you appreciate it a little bit more because it stands out. It like, it just covers, it drenches the palate. And well, that's you, what I'm so sorry. Go ahead, Fred. I, I was going to say, when you have something that drenches the palate and kind of like covers everything, it will start it'll start really kind of showing uh its strengths you know you, you'll feel it like the the more concentrated airs you'll feel that and the flavors will just pop out a little bit more because it, it's it's staying constant on your palate you keep getting mm -hmm. on it and getting on it so now De I, I was... Devin asked in the chat like how can I jump on this barrel is it possible to get a bottle uh, again, those who are part of, you know, the the former Whiskey Club will be getting emails. The best thing I can tell you, Devin, is to become a member of YouTube. Uh, and then, you know, there's going to be communication efforts, you know, through there. And also sign up on my newsletter at fredminnick.com. But, um, yeah, so it's going to be those who were with Whiskey Club in the original state going to get first crack. Going to get first crack, and it's going to be through Sealbox. So keep your eyes peeled at Sealbox too. And I, Hog, I know you had something to say there. No, I was just going to say it's amazing. I know, you know, like like Steve said, you know, we've watched you, and this is, I mean, always knew of you and always watched your stuff. But at the beginning of COVID, when we spent all that time, you know, when you did an every night stream, and you know, listening to you every night and going through all the stuff that you did, it's kind of amazing to me that you can drink these whiskeys. It's tough, you know, for somebody that doesn't do it necessarily as much as you do and try different things to really point out the differences. And uh, that's the stuff from the Whiskey Club, which I think is was, was very interesting. And, um, you know, I, I appreciate how you how, how you explained it over, over the last uh, several times we did it. And um, it's an amazing uh, thing to do. And uh, it's pretty cool. Well, it's yeah. gonna, it's gonna, it, it's gonna keep on keeping on. We got Taste Camp that will continue. Uh, I've got a, I've got something really exciting coming up. I can't, I don't know how much I can get into it now, but I have someone who's wanting to do something really, really, really cool with me on like a pay per view uh, kind of style that I think will be so awesome. And just a lot of there's just a lot of great things and and you all will always be a part of that little kind of like club. So 
I appreciate you all and all the support that you have given me through the thick and the thin. Uh, this has been a been a rocky year, and you know, man, I mean, it's been a year about a year ago. You know, for me personally, I'm kind yeah. of like a, a a move on guy. I don't want to look too much, you know, in the past. But man, that sucked. I think we a lot of us have reflected on it. But you know, here we are picking barrels together now. You know, so I'm, I think good things are ahead. Yeah, and I, I tell you what, the, there's things in the past of, you know, there's a lot of positives actually from it. You try to look at the positives and things, and uh, yeah. I think a lot of good things actually came of it if you looked at it closely a little bit and try to figure it out. And I, I think that's a way, uh, that's where you need to look at it, you know. And I think there's a lot of good positives that came out of it for a lot of people if they look at it and find those places. So, absolutely. Well, yeah. gentlemen, last thoughts on our winner here. 297. Well, when do we get it? How long will it take? A month or two? That's what I'm looking forward to after trying this. <laughs> Field box, let's uh, get bourbon or going and get, get this in a bottle in my house. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have this pretty soon. I mean, we got a lot of stuff coming. Uh, uh, you know, we'll have the, we got the Woodenville on the way. Uh, New Riff is on the way. Um, we got the Jack Daniels smoke wagons coming up. You know, this one, you know, I thought there was going to be two barrels here, but obviously we were only picking one. But, you know, yeah. By the way, yeah, was, there, I, was there another? One is, is a good thing. I mean, it speaks to your integrity. If you don't like it, you're not going to sell it. So, I mean, every once in a while you get one that you don't like, but when you get something you really do, it speaks well of you. Well, I appreciate that. And also you and, and Hog, so... This was a team effort here. This was absolutely a team effort. All right, what's your last thought on 297, Hog? Well, like we talked about from the beginning, it's rich. I, I get the oily mouth coating feel from it. Um, like I said, I'm getting, I'm getting more of that, for whatever reason, I'm getting uh, like that caramelized uh, brown sugar a little bit. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. actually got more vanilla now too, um, as well as all the typical, uh, rye spices, obviously they're in there, uh, in bits and pieces with, uh, every sip you're, I'm picking up different things now that I'm, you know, on it more now, as opposed to going across the board. So, um, I, I think it's a big winner, man. And, uh, I can't wait to get back after it and maybe you can get five, five, seven or whatever the other one is. And we'll dump it in the, uh, pot of, uh, scrapple for, uh, when we all get together sometime, we'll make some up. <laughs> Scrapple and five, five, seven. Here we go. Woo, I love it. Well, well, gentlemen, it's, uh, you know, here we are at the 45 minute mark and folks are, uh, you know, salivating to get this barrel. So hopefully we'll, we'll have that barrel. Uh, we'll have this barrel ready soon and, and folks can uh, get it for themselves and taste it. But uh, it was it was great hanging out with you all. It's always great hanging out with you two. I just had a great time. It was great sipping whiskey, and it's also too. It's I think it's always very important to kind of like, you know, to respect the process. You know, we went through the process, and we had one we universally loved, and then we had some so sos, and then we had a flight that was like meh. And if you all felt confident, if you if you felt really strongly about something, you would have stood up and said something. And that's the thing about whiskey, is that you can't be quiet. Like if you really, really like something. So as we close out, was there a barrel here that you wanted to go to bat for that before you did not? And it could be from the bourbon or the rye. Was there something that you feel like we're missing? Stand up and speak for the barrel or forever. Hold your peace. I'm good. I'm good. It's good. All right. Well, gentlemen, thank you for joining. Everybody, if you haven't um, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button. A lot of good things coming ahead on this YouTube channel, but that's going to do it here. Thank you so much to my guests, Hog and Steve. You all are my brothers in bourbon, so I look forward to doing this again, hopefully in person. Very soon. Actually, I'm out. I gotta, I gotta pour a little bit. All that talking, I just kept uh, uh, sipping.
I got to just say this because you always say it at the end. Uh, vodka sucks. <laughs> <laughs> vodka sucks. <laughs>